Hey guys, I'm Gene Dallasala, president of Audioholics. And I'm Hugo Rivera, vice president of marketing. Gene, how are you today, man? Hugo, I am pumped up, ready to do some education. Awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, our peeps are asking, you know, how about uh, matching amplifier power to loudspeakers? What do you think about that? I can't tell you how often I've been getting that question in emails. Even I am getting emails via my fan page, believe it or not. Really? Yes, I promise you. <laughs> uh, well, people are doing bicep curls, they're asking Hugo how much power they need for their speakers. <laughs> it's I love awesome. It. Yeah, I, I, get that, I get that a lot. I get that question a lot. I think we have some articles on it too, but mm -hmm. I think it's important that we do a video on it and yeah. set the record straight. Absolutely. Well, Gene, you know, why is this such a nebulous subject? It's nebulous because without knowing the test signal that the, power, that the speaker is being rated at, the power number is meaningless. Meaningless. Okay? Mm -hmm. You could go to a manufacturer's website and they'll say, oh, our power, our speaker can handle 200 watts. Mm -hmm. What the hell does that mean? Yeah, there you go. exactly. 200 watts of watt. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's the problem. In fact, we did a full video on this, if you remember. And in fact, I'll go ahead and link it below. There's a huge issue with the power numbers out there that manufacturers are giving. So, and, and the reason being is there are some standards. There is an IEC standard. Most consumer audio companies don't follow it, but the pros do. The pro consumers do. Uh, pro audio does. Mm -hmm. And the reason being, quite frankly, is if you get some of these cheap speakers, you know, you get the ones on Amazon or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, the white van specials, and they say they, they're rated at 100 watts. If you actually use an IEC protocol to test this power of the speaker, it might only rate at 50 watts. Right. And 50 watts is not a good marketing number, guys. Yeah. So they always like to fudge the numbers when they can to make the product look more powerful than it is. There's a lot of voodoo calculations that happen to come up with that number sometimes. Oh, absolutely. But I think we should talk about some examples of, because we've done a series of mm -hmm. articles on power handling and loudspeakers by one of our engineers that wrote for us. And he did an incredible job. I'm not going to cite all the DBs and numbers on it, but you can go and read it for the propeller heads that want to know. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you take a woofer, let's say a 10-inch driver, okay, mm -hmm. and you feed it a constant voltage, let's say it's 28 volts, comes out to whatever power number that is, depending on the impedance right. of the driver. If you feed that signal as a white noise, which has limited low frequency content, but it's spread out to the high frequencies right. versus pink noise, which, which has more of its concentrated more. energy at the low mm -hmm. frequencies, which signal do you think is going to kill the woofer? Obviously the pink noise. Even if it's the same voltage going to that driver. Exactly. Okay? So that's one example of how a test signal can be used to determine whether that speaker can handle the power or not. Mm -hmm. Another example is when you take a tone burst. Okay, we did a test where we had, it, it was like 11 cycles on and 99 cycles off. Mm -hmm. And I think the average power came out to 55 watts RMS. And you're mm -hmm. like, oh, 55 watts, any speaker can handle that. No, because when the turn burst was on, yeah. the peak power was 1100 watts and we watched the voice Done. call blow up. Done, totally. So again, guys, it really depends on the test signal being used, the bandwidth it's being used at, okay? And, and the bottom line is you gotta use a little common sense. Totally. Because loudspeakers, not like amplifiers. Amplifiers have specific ways of measuring distortion, and they say when the FTC says it's 100 watts RMS, it's going to be 100 watts full bandwidth at 0.1%, mm -hmm. or even 1%, which is hard clipping, okay? Right. With speakers, there's really no standard in measuring distortion, mm -hmm. okay? Because our ear, it's very complex of how we process distortion Com from a loudspeaker. Completely different. You can't always mm -hmm. quantify it. I, I wish we could put it in a neat little box, <laughs> wrap it up, and give it to you for Christmas. With a bow. With a bow on it. Yes. Yeah, but unfortunately, <laughs> that doesn't work. Not happening. So I say use your judgment and, be, and use common sense. If you hear a woofer bottoming out, that means it's coming to its mechanical failure. Correct. And There's, in fact, Gene, let me stop you there for a minute. Uh -huh. Let's talk about the two types of failure. Good okay? point. This, so we have mechanical, you just mentioned. That. Mechanical failure is when the woofer actually, the voice coil leaves its air, leaves the gap, okay? Mm -hmm. You're physically moving that thing beyond its X max, and that will physically damage the driver over time. I mean, if it bombs once or twice, you're okay, but you could actually misalign a voice coil or bend the former and cause major permanent damage to that product, to that driver, mechanical failure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now you can finish your thought pattern there. Well, the thermal failure is the next mm -hmm. one. Thermal failure is when the voice coil actually fries. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, people say, oh yeah, if an amplifier clips, it'll destroy a speaker. Well, let's understand why that happens, okay? When you're clipping an amplifier, 
what typically happens when an amplifier clips is that waveform is no longer random. It just becomes a, a constant on. Constant on. Mm -hmm. And what happens there is you get all this high frequency content, the harmonics are being concentrated into the tweeter. Mm -hmm. A tweeter driver typically handles less power than a mid range or a, or a woofer. So yeah, you could fry that tweeter. I mean, a tweeter might only handle 50 watts, mm -hmm. whereas a subwoofer might handle 200 watts. Makes sense. So you're cranking that volume all the way up because you want it louder, and you're putting out over 100 watts of clipped power, and the concentration of that energy is towards the tweeter. Bye-bye, tweeter. Yeah, totally. I've blown tweeters out with this clock song from Pink Floyd, mm -hmm. where I left it up cranked, and I forgot when yeah. I went out of the room, and all of a sudden the clocks hit. Bye-bye, tweeter. Done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Common sense here is definitely called for yeah and you know um it really if you really want to know the, the truth of the matter you got to look you got to investigate if you want to talk to the manufacturer you ask them what's the power handling of each driver in the speaker what are the values of the capacitors and inductors because mm -hmm. a lot of the cheaper speakers use lower val value uh capacitors working mm -hmm. voltage they might only be rated for 63 volts mm. whereas the better speakers would have 100 volt caps on it Okay, a lot of the inductors, if they use these cheap iron core inductors, they saturate, they could distort, they could burn out over time. Right. So, I mean, it really it depends on the gauge of the wire that they use on that, too. So, it's really, a, you got to look at the whole system, okay? And you got to use common sense. If you hear the thing distorting, then you know you need to back it off. Totally. You need to use base management if your woofers are bottoming. Mm -hmm. You know, pro audio is a different animal because pro audio actually follows more standards. And they follow an IEC standard, which I think is a pink noise. It's a shaped pink noise that, that's rolled off at like 40 or 50 hertz and rolled off at 5 kilohertz. And when they give you a wattage rating and it says it meets this IEC, te IEC test, let's say the speaker's rated at 200 watts, then it's a safe bet if they use that method of, me of uh, calculating the power that you could use an amplifier that's twice the power rating mm -hmm. because that, that test signal gives you a 6 dB crest factor, which means whatever the rating is, it could go four times higher. Right. So pro audio, they, they play a little bit less games than they're doing consumer audio for obvious reasons. They're doing sound reinforcement. They need the stuff to play super loud. Exactly. All right. Well, I think you covered this in great detail, Gene. Thank you for that. Yeah, bottom line, guys, is buy as much power as you could afford. Don't be afraid of getting a 200-watt amplifier and if your speakers are rated at 200 watts or 150 watts. Just realize, don't listen like an idiot. <laughs> exactly. Okay. <laughs> Don't turn it to volume 11 when you should only turn it to volume 6. We've all blown speakers before, Gene. We're all guilty of it. So we're just trying to tell you what not to do so you can go ahead and save your speakers. And save your ears, too. You yes. Should, you shouldn't be listening at that loudness anyways. In fact, we published a good article about e hearing loss. Your wife actually wrote it. Yes. Yeah. I'll link it up below. So you sure. go ahead and... Uh, Take a look at that article. Very important for all of you guys that uh, like to crank that up. Not a great idea because you, your listening days are counted then. <laughs> so again, to recap, you can't match the amplifier power to the speaker in most cases, okay? I can't give you that instant gratification number. Unfortunately. But we tried to help. <laughs> <laughs> at any rate, with that said, you know, uh, let us know what you think. Click like on the button below, share this with your friend, give us some other topics in the comments below. And until next time, keep, keep listening. listening.